Hello, everyone, and welcome on into the Betting Pros Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Thomas Viola, and joining me today, he's known as the Pablo Escobar of Parlays, none other than Taylor Wilson. Taylor, how are you doing today? Doing great, Tom. This is uh, this is an absolute treat to come onto this program and try to hype up the greatest league in the world. It's just three letters. That's all you need to know. M, L, and S, baby. And this is... Uh, Hopefully we can convince some people to to get in on the action because this is a really, really fun league. You and I have, you know, wagered on all kinds of leagues around the world. Uh, and I don't know, the fun factor, I don't think anything can beat MLS. So I'm, I'm happy to get into it here. That is right. The topic of today's show, we want to highlight a betting market that you're probably not thinking about betting. And that is Major League Soccer. I threw out a call for some mailbag questions, both on the Twitterverse. You can find me there yeah. at TV at work, of course. Taylor, you can find it at ATLT Will with one L. And I threw it out in the Betting Pros Discord. If you're not a member, sign up today. Get in on the action. We have some fantastic members of our community who always love coming out, supporting each other, and making some great bets. I saw a couple great parlays cash in just the last couple days in the Betting Pros Discord in our soccer section, which I'm active in a lot. Again, great group of guys there, but let's get on into it here. Of course, some background. Taylor, you and I actually do a show together on MLS betting. Uh, you can uh, you can find that uh, over at Bet Rivers, but this is very much our niche. This is our favorite sport to talk about here, and it's fun to actually get to highlight it here because the reality is you have a better edge as a better when you are betting on a market that a lot of people are not touching. The lines aren't going to be as sharp. The market isn't going to be as hammered. Like if you bet on the NFL, the NBA, the yeah. Premier League even, you're, you're getting a hammered line. The NFL betting market's the most efficient betting market on the planet. It sees so much action that that number, by the time it goes off at, at kickoff, that number has been hammered to pieces, and it is what that line should be. You're not going to find an edge in a market like that. But in these smaller betting leagues, you find a little more of that edge. That's why over in Europe with soccer, a lot of people talk about betting on the championship. It's a league that people don't think about as much because it's the second division in England. Well, MLS, it's the first division in America, but the first thing that we got as a response to the mailbag was people watch MLS, and it's true. It might not be the most popular league on the planet, but I'm telling you, it is a just as a fan to watch one of the most fun, Taylor. Well, and attendance numbers would say otherwise to that uh, to that replier. So uh, you know, take that. But yeah, I look. I, I MLS is a fascinating league because yes, it's soccer, but it throws the sport out um, compared to the European leagues. It's a completely different animal. For one, the schedule is completely different. So you have this in some. South American, Central American leagues as well, but where you're actually doing a summer schedule, right? So this is not breaking news to anyone who follows MLS, but the March to November schedule is a fascinating thing in terms of how the public deals with this league in North America, Tom, because let's just think about how MLS starts the season, what it is in the middle of the season and what it is at the end. When it starts, you're talking about March, April, one of the busiest times in the North American uh, sports calendar, right? Yes, it's after the Super Bowl, but you're getting into March Madness. People are putting their baseball futures out there. NBA and NHL are gearing toward the playoffs and then into the playoffs. That's the stretch we're in now. But we're only a couple of weeks away. The NBA Finals are going to be gone next week. I don't know. NHL playoffs a couple away. weeks ago. Yeah. We're going to get into the doldrums of the summer, Tom. This is a non-World Cup summer. That means it is all about Major League Soccer. It's going to be fascinating. You and I both know we'll get those texts from people around the industry occasionally. Once NBA and NHL goes out, you know, the phone's going to be buzzing with, hey, MLS plays, MLS plays, MLS plays, because that's what we have. It's that in baseball, and you're not really a baseball guy, Tom. So it's MLS. That's what we got in the summer months. And then again, when you get into the playoffs, it's right up against football. So the public, how they they treat these numbers is different again. It's kind of three phases of the season in terms of what the public is doing uh, in the U.S. and Canada across the North American market. So I think that's an interesting aspect, trying to occasionally kind of predict what the public is going to be doing on this thing, especially when we get into later June, July and August, when, you know, a lot of football czars and those kind of guys and gals are, uh, are getting into MLS action as well. It's so true, and especially we are about to hit the doldrums of summer. Like you said, it's this and baseball. Yes, we're going to have some Nations League play going on, but that's pretty sporadic, and we were supposed to have a World Cup this summer, but the Qataris decided, oh, you know, FIFA decided we're going to put that 
in a place that can't host events sure. in the summertime. And so now it's being moved to winter. That's going to be a whole barrel of monkeys when we get to it. But for now, for the summer, MLS, really, this is where they have a chance to shine, given the different scheduling factor. They're going to be the only game in town. And it's a league that if you want to take a chance betting on something that's a little bit different, we, we get the D-Gen label all the time. Oh, you're a real D-Gen for betting on Malaysian table tennis. And sure. the same goes for MLS. But you know what? That's, that's kind of the point. You're the person who is going out there. If you want to make money betting, one of the best ways to do that is to find a niche, create a spot where you can be going and saying, okay, I actually might know more about this than the book. Because that's the biggest thing. You most likely don't know more than the book about, it, about the NFL. But yeah. Major League Soccer... A lot of these books aren't paying much attention to it. The lines are going to be a little bit looser. So today we want to teach you guys a little bit about betting on MLS, some things that you can look for, and we'll talk about some of the teams that we particularly like to bet on, especially this season. And Taylor, let's start off with the number one MLS betting trend, overs. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, I, this is obviously a, a very warm over league. No one likes betting the under, but in MLS, actually, you're often much better off going over. This is a league where, look, if you are used to betting soccer, if you're used to betting, especially major tournaments, I mean, one of the big differences between MLS, especially when you get in people who are, you know, maybe kind of new to the league or, or casual bettors who possibly do know soccer and maybe bet Champions League, maybe bet uh, during, let's say, last summer's Euros. Maybe there are people who had a lot of experience betting that it's a completely different animal because those international competitions, those cup knockout competitions are often very cagey are often very kind of under prone, you know, decent situations for exactas. I hit on a one nil exacta, the champions league final last year, for example, at nine to one, those kinds of plays you're not going to be getting. You could, if you wanted to, but you should not be doing an MLS very often. What you should be looking at are, Hey, here is a team, you know, so let's just think about some of the plays this week. We have a Nashville team that at home is just constantly scoring goals. Is a really good both teams to score play as well. Those are the kinds of moves that you want to be looking at just as a broad principle in this league. Overs, both teams to score, things in the scoring goals department, which, hey, that's also a lot of fun to bet, right, Tom? So it works out well. You get the entertainment factor. Even if you lose, you're paying to enjoy the game, basically, right, which can be a part of sports betting as well. But on the trend data, you're going to hit a lot of the time on those numbers. Yes, you occasionally have to go a little bit higher. If you're used to betting in England, two and a quarter, two and a half, that's often where the total goals number is. MLS, you're sometimes going to see, you know, we had a three and a half earlier this year in an NYCFC game. I went over, it did not hit. So occasionally it'll go against you, but you need to be a little bit more willing to say, hey, I'm going to go over 2.75. I'm going to go over three and you're going to be in good shape a lot of the time. That along with the both teams to score market, Tom, those are two great MLS plays, broadly speaking, obviously. Want to track all of your wagers in one place? Check out the Betting Pros Pick Tracker at bettingpros.com slash pick tracking. It syncs up with your sports books to tally which picks hit, which miss, and gives you a live look at what the public is doing so you can use real-time tracking to determine which plays to make and which to fade. Get on the leaderboard and quickly become a sharp by using the free advice we offer at bettingpros.com slash pick tracking. Now, a lot of sharp bettors, one of the number one things that they say is unders are the move. Unders are one of the things that they like to bet. If they're betting on totals, they're leaning into the under market. But Major League Soccer, the numbers actually do back this up, that you're better off going the other way. I did a little bit of digging, some stats for you. Over the last five-plus years, counting this season as you know, a half season because we're right in the thick of it, 2022, 54% of games have cashed to the over. 2021, over the entire season, 54% cashed to the over. In 2020, that number ballooned to 59%, which is the same it was in 2019. And then in 2018, 63%. And 2017, 60% of games all cashed the overs. Over the last five plus years, that averages you out to 58% of games to the over. And remember, at minus 110 odds, 52.4% is your break even point on betting. You need to hit on 52.4% of your bets if you're betting at minus 110 to simply break even on your betting total for the year. 58% is obviously a lot higher than that. So on paper, you could blind bet every over and you're going to make a profit. Is that actually true? No. 
because not yeah. every game is at minus 110. A lot of them are juiced, and you don't really want to blind bet as a practice anyway. But still, the numbers back this up that it's a league where you can lean overs, and that means that you get to root for more scoring. You get to have a little bit more fun with it. And some of the totals, they're, they're a little bit easier to spot. They're a little bit easier to point at and go, oh, hang on, there's a spot here. Because again, a lot of these games, they just get the cookie cutter lines of two and a half minus 120 to the over, which again, that puts you up to around 56, 57% to break even. But my point here being, you can identify some of these and that can be a really, really big addition to your betting arsenal, being able to say, oh, hey, I'm betting on something that statistically is actually supposed to go in my favor here, Taylor. Well, absolutely. And for those that aren't familiar with soccer betting in general, you will not know maybe that this is a different animal, this sport, than, say, betting on the NFL, college football, a lot of those things that you you get, you know, huge public action on. If you're betting a three, three and a half point spread in the NFL, there's one side of that. There's the other side of that. You're betting sides in soccer. There's a little thing called a draw, right, Tom? So a yes. lot of those, you know, if you're someone who's just used to betting sides, you're adding a third element to this. Now, of course, there's draw no bets. There's ways that you can avoid this and simplify your plays. But a lot of the public, and I think this is one of the things that happens, how the books just cook the public, especially for something like, say, the World Cup and, you know, uh, tournaments that, that bring in very casual soccer fans. You do not have the same kinds of odds just naturally because there are three options, win, draw or loss. Uh, on those money line plays. So one way to avoid that, I mentioned the draw no bet, is what you're talking about, Tom, is just looking at the totals market and some great data you just pulled out. The overs, fairly reliable in this league. You know, reliability is not always something that we have in MLS, but there is trend data there. And again, if you're someone who's trying to get into soccer betting and you're thinking, oh, the World Cup's coming up this fall, MLS is such a better opportunity to make money than the World Cup. I'll just tell you that right now. Not just because there's not as much action happening in the public which is true but you also have so much more trend data to go off of when you're already trying to handicap the u.s versus iran in november in qatar you know yeah like the u.s will let's you know fingers crossed win that game but in terms of the gambling market good luck finding something on that right mls you have years you have 20 plus years of trend data at this point to look at when you're talking about things like the futures markets and you know, this is a long season. You have a lot of trend data as it goes along to look at as well. So it can seem a little bit unpredictable, but you just pulled out the numbers, Tom. We're finding the trends. They are there. You just have to do the work and find them. And you hit on another great point with three-way betting and how that's a little bit different than just betting a money line price in the NFL or the NBA or, well, any other sport. Because obviously there's only two ways that a game can go in most sports. You've got a winner and you've got a loser. But with soccer, you have that draw, and it means that you have a three-way betting line. You can bet either team to win, or you can bet on them to tie. And one of the nice things that this, uh, that does actually create for you is it gives you a little bit more of an edge in the fact that teams that should be favored at maybe minus 200 right. are going to be are going to be in the minus 150, minus 130 category because of the fact that there is this third potential outcome. It skews the lines a little bit. Now draws they typically hit around a quarter of a time in Major League Soccer, which is pretty similar to the rate that they're going to hit in the Premier League going back historically the last couple of years from what I've been able to find. But one thing that I really like about betting in Major League Soccer is, once again, this is the common theme of the episode, guys. It goes back to the fact that books aren't paying that much attention to this sport. And one of the things that I've noticed, and this is a little more anecdotal, but still I think it holds water, is... Teams on the road get weighted much more heavily than they do in other leagues. The books look at who the home team is and they skew the they skew the odds in their favor more heavily than they do in other sports around the world. And this means that you can get some great prices on some of these road dog teams that maybe shouldn't be road dogs. One of my favorite, I cashed a five to one ticket on Austin FC a couple weeks ago because they beat LA. The only reason I made the bet was because to me the price was off and they should have been somewhere in the plus 250 range. Bets like that, you have a better chance of hitting in this league. You have a better chance of finding a good underdog because the books simply aren't paying attention to how good this team actually is in this game and how well they match up versus in some other sports that you're not going to be able to find it because A, the book is paying more attention 
And B, especially you see it in the Premier League, upsets are much more rare and infrequent than the unpredictability of Major League Soccer. Well, some of these numbers that you get in MLS, you would only get, say, in a weird League Cup or FA Cup game in England, right? Like where it's a fourth division team playing against a Premier League side. You don't, I, like we talked about this on our show this week, New England and Orlando coming up the next midweek. Orlando, you know, current prices, you can get them at better than four to one, plus 420 in some spots. That's insane for a game that you and I both read as essentially a coin flip, if not leaning Orlando, even in a vacuum, even without the numbers, right? Like we see Orlando as this top three away side in MLS, which is a kind of a wonky trend, but you know, still really good away from home, New England, post Matt Turner, post Adam Buxa, et cetera, et cetera. There's no reason why that, that why Orlando should be plus 420. It's because they're away from home. That's not the type of number that you get uh, in England. And the same goes for the converse. Like in England, if you're ever trying to bet these last few years, Man City or Liverpool, you have to go into the spread market. You have to be betting minus one, minus one and a quarter or minus one and a half on those teams. Almost all of their games, you're just not finding value unless you're doing parlays. That's not the case in MLS. The good teams, if you figure out the good teams in this league, I think you and I both agree, LAFC at this point, we should call them a good team. You're still getting solid prices on LAFC. You can get plus prices in some of these games on LAFC. So I think that's one of the things I like about this point of the MLS season, especially, Tom. It's different than the first two, four, six weeks where we're kind of all scrambling to figure out, you know, we're the preseason power rankings, right? You know, what's who's good, who's not. Sometimes MLS takes a little bit longer than, say, the English Premier League to find those things out. But as the sample size gets bigger, you can really still find some great numbers in that market. And the Road Dogs is a great example. And I would also go ahead and say the home favorites, when they are one of the three, four, five teams that we like in the elite tier in MLS, you can also get good prices on those teams compared to other leagues. It's just good prices all around for everyone. Exactly. It's good prices. It's it's got that fun unpredictability factor, but it's also got things that you can look at and find yourself an edge. And like you said, one of my favorite things is the fact that you can find good prices on good teams still, because there is a little more unpredictability than the Manchester city only having three losses for an entire season factor that you get in bigger leagues, like the prem that are much more top heavy and don't have that same unpredictability that comes with the parity that a league like MLS has that, gives you these opportunities to make some of these profits. Now let's open up the mailbag here, Taylor. I put out a little bit of a call yeah. on the social media and again, the betting pros discord to see if we couldn't get a couple questions from people who might be interested. And we did get a couple hits starting with this one from the discord and not so much a betting question, but they wanted to know who is your favorite player in MLS. All right. So I, I this is a current player or ever, I guess so you could ever. give, I guess we could give an, an either or, my MLS experience is odd in that I, I am an Atlanta United fan, but I'm an Atlanta sports fan who has existed as a soccer fan without a team for, for a long time. I started following footy in the mid 2000s. So was following, you know, the Atlanta Silverbacks and a lot of minor league soccer in that era. So I am going to give a boring current player answer, which is Joseph Martinez. I, you know, those first two years of the Atlanta United experience, especially uh, before all the injuries came in, he and Miguel Almiron were, two of the great players of this league has ever seen. Uh, and to see that for an expansion side, we'll talk about some other expansion sides in a bit, uh, was so much fun. So I'm going it, to, maybe it's boring for United fans. I don't care. Uh, give me Josef Martinez. What about you? Oh, come on. You know, mine is the easiest. He's the player whose jersey I'm wearing right now. MLS is all time leading goal scorer. Yep. There it is. There it None is. None other than Chris Wondolowski. Uh, again, all-time goal-scoring leader, a hero for the San Jose Earthquakes for so many years. And this this jersey is actually blessed by the Pope. I uh, I took it to the Vatican. That is, a, that is a very true fact. All right, guys, real quick, I want to talk to you about Sleeper. It's the fastest-growing fantasy platform today with millions of players. You probably already have a fantasy league on there. But now you can win on Sleeper by playing their new over-under game. It's super simple. First, in any sport, choose two or more players that you like and pick the total. For example, number of points in a basketball game or hits in baseball. Then choose the amount of money you want to enter into the contest. You pick correctly, you can win anywhere from two times to over 20 times the money you put in. 
The main reason I'm excited about Over Under on Sleeper is that it's the only app where I can join my buddies' contests and play together. It's got a built-in group chat where I can see and copy my friend's picks with the tap of a button, and I can do some trash talking too. So stop what you're doing and download Sleeper now to play their new Over Under game. Have fun with your friends and make some money, and make sure to use promo code BETTINGPROS, all one word, and Sleeper will match your deposit up to $100. Again, download Sleeper and use the promo code BETTINGPROS, all one word, when you deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Now let's get back to the show. Our other mailbag question here coming from the Twitter sphere comes from Kowisenberg at Kowisenberg DFS. Shout out to Zach, a good friend of maybe not the program, but definitely a good friend. <laughs> Has the line gotten too far at this point? Austin FC Taylor opened it 100 to 1. They now sit at 16 to 1 at some books to outright win the MLS Cup. I'll tell you, I could find them on DraftKings at 20 to 1. And yeah, you're not getting the same value that you got way back when, but you're still getting value at 20 to 1 on what I see genuinely as a top five team in this league. So the first thing I'll say is that's the right tier to look at. I think you and I are both in agreement when you're doing a future, you want a little bit of punch to your ticket. You don't want mm-hmm. you know a close to even bet. Even if you love it in a vacuum, it's just it's just not sensible when you're putting in six months or whatever uh, of a play to do that. So I like the tier. It's kind of the second tier of teams in this league. For example, I would not, you just can't do LAFC or the defending champs NYCFC at those prices. I probably think the price is wrong on, on Philly at this point as well um, as the third favorite via bet rivers currently. And then there's a bunch of teams tied at 16 to one. So I like that 16 to one tier. I think that's the right tier to look at. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure that's the team I would take with those prices. Now, you know, the fact that our perennial future love team, Seattle, is right there in that mix, you just have to take them over Austin. I would take Seattle at 16 to 1 over Austin at 16 to 1 at this point. You mentioned I, you I, get I, Austin I, at a better price. That I can I, understand. But go ahead. I, I will interrupt you there. So, that price, you're not getting the best value on. I can confirm because you've got Austin at 20 to 1 on DraftKings. And again, line shopping, the most important thing that you can yeah. do. When making sports bets, guys, Seattle 10 to 1 on DraftKings, 18, okay. 18 to 1 on BetMGM. There's a lot of value there, and I'm, uh, I'm going to be moseying down to put a little bit of a ticket on that while I still can and see if I can't make some cash on a late season Seattle run because their line's a little bit depressed right now. They just got done with the CONCACAF Champions League. They kind of dropped a few points in MLS while they were focusing on that, but they're the champions of North America. Now they're going to focus back in. I think 18 to one is the best price that you're going to see on them this season. I'm with you. Wow. A lot of variance uh, across the various futures markets. Uh, great point. Yeah. Great point from Tom. Do your shopping, do your window yeah. shopping, figure out what these prices are. I'm here looking at some bet rivers numbers right now where Seattle has the same odds as Austin. And in that market, I'm, I'm taking uh, Seattle any day of the week. I mean, there's just to get back to the Austin point and we can talk about Seattle and some of these other futures what Austin has been doing this season is, is incredible for a a new team in this league, a team that, you know, I think a lot of people, the most optimistic uh, sort of assessment of Austin in preseason was maybe they can sneak into the playoffs because so many teams make the playoffs in MLS. Like that was kind of the, the ceiling that a lot of people saw for them. And they have far surpassed that that came out the gates with multiple five back to back five goal scoring performances to start out the year. And, kind of haven't looked back until a little bit more recently, the loss 4-1 drubbing in, in LA to a Galaxy team that had kind of been struggling before that game was pretty worrying. I think there are a lot of defensive question marks for this team. Fifth worst uh, expected goals against numbers in the league. So the analytics say they've been overperforming a little bit on that side of the field. I love them attacking. I mean, Drew is incredible. Fagunda is incredible. I mean, what they're doing, the chemistry they have going forward is fantastic. It's not the first MLS team that we've seen saying, hey, They have a great front three, great, you know, front four, maybe some issues in defensive midfield and on the back line. Not the first time we've said that about an MLS team. I would say that is looking increasingly true uh, about Austin. I would also just be a little bit careful on kind of what they've done and who they've played so far this year. Based on uh, Jeff, uh, let me give proper attribution here, Jeff Segarin's uh, rankings, they have the 18th toughest schedule. So far this year, whereas you look at a team like the Sounders, fifth toughest based on his ranking. So they've been, you know, taking the benefits a little bit of the scheduling stuff. I think their next five games are going to be fascinating. I don't have it in front of me, but it's like 
not elite teams, but they have to go to Montreal. They have to go to Atlanta. You know, there's a lot of really tough contests in these next five for Austin. I think that'll tell us a lot about what this team is. But I do think they'll be in the playoffs. So for a team that you think will be in the playoffs, 16 to one is solid enough value. I just, you know, I would be a little bit weary for Austin being in fourth and Seattle being in 11th. And Seattle has those same numbers as the fourth place team in the, in the conference. And that's for a reason. I mean, the Sounders, they've made four of the last six MLS Cup finals. They've never missed the playoffs. They're not in a playoff spot right now, but we know they will be, Tom. It's what yeah. they do at the end of the day. So you're getting a little bit of inflated value on Seattle already just because they're not in a playoff spot right now. That's awesome because I two months from now, three months from now, they're going to be in the single digits to one odds department, maybe even sooner than that. 16 to one, even though it was better a few weeks ago, you still have to take Seattle over Austin if that's the conversation. But like you say, you shop around, maybe you get Austin at 20 to one. I don't hate it. I would just be very weary. There are teams, you know, Montreal has been in the league now 10 years. They've never made an MLS cup final, right? Orlando has been in a similar amount of time. They've never made an MLS cup final. It's the MLS cup playoffs are a weird animal. Atlanta went off and won it in their second year. So the trend data is just completely bizarre when it comes to stuff like that, like this Red Bulls haven't been there in 15 years, you know? Um, the, the Red Bulls are another team worth talking about a yeah. little bit because you could get them at 25 to one at circa right now to 18 wow. at DraftKings. Wow. I, I don't hate that. Oh no, I, that's, that's incredible. Well, so the Red Bulls are also another one of these teams on the 16 to one board for bet rivers. They're on the same Austin Seattle number as well. 25 to one, you said 25 to one. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's worth a go. That's a Red Bulls team. The Red Bull season so far has been about being not only the best team away from home in the league, but like one of the best away MLS teams we've seen in a while and just weird at home usually those kinds of things mean, oh, you're actually just a good team and you'll figure it out at home. That's sort of where I'm leaning with the Red Bulls. They create a lot of chances. I think Patrick Klimala eventually figures it out, it out and is a 20-plus goal scorer in this league. Um, yeah, I think the value is absolutely there at 25-1. to 1. I'm not sure I would do it at 16, you know, just for the same point that I just made about taking Seattle at that number. I would take Seattle over New York because of what we've seen in recent history or all of their history. Um, but yeah, that's a great number. I mean, look, this is another example of what this league can give you a good Red Bulls team, maybe not a great team, but a good team. And often we've seen good, not great teams go on deep runs in MLS cup playoffs, Tom. Yeah, you really have. And that's one thing that I want to talk, talk, talk about here real quick. I want to mention one final team galaxy are 14 to one on DraftKings, 20 to one at bet MGM. They're plus 1145 at Circa. And if Circa likes a team, first off, they probably have a ticket on them. They probably have more liability on them. But if Circa is bumping a team down that far and they, they have it lower than the other books, I'm inclined to take one of those prices at one of the other books. Mm, interesting. That's that's a good piece of analysis. Um, yeah, I, I think that's sensible enough. As far as the Galaxy as a team, super weird. I, I, mean, I, I think they're right in that Red Bulls, Red Bulls yeah. category. The Red Bulls, yeah. they're better on the road. Galaxy has been more just... They've had a, some really good games, and some games they've dropped. Started out the season song, strong with Chicharito scoring a lot of goals. I, I think they will round into form. They're a team that you expect not to miss the playoffs two years in a row. And if you can pick one of these teams that's going to be right in that mid-pack, they're going to be in one of those spots where they could get hot towards the end of the season and potentially be one of your MLS Cup finalists. Guys, real quick, remember when you're looking for free picks and sports betting advice, bettingpros.com has you covered with tips from over 150 experts to make it easy for you to cash out. Download the app to get sports betting alerts. You'll get notified of favorable bets based on line movements, consensus picks from the most accurate experts, and vetted systems in play. Betting Pros monitors all of the major sports books, most accurate experts, and top systems to identify the best betting opportunities. So download today in the Apple or Google Play stores. The worry, the only worry for Seattle would be if you somehow think they're not making the playoffs. Because if you don't make the playoffs, it's the only way that MLS Cup playoff craziness and weirdness and value goes out the window is if you're not even involved, right? So that would be the only concern. But the fact that that team's won three of their last four and is looking a lot better after uh, becoming the first MLS team to win CONCACAF Champions League, I do think they're right there in the mix. So yeah, it's a great point. Um, Tons of value on the board. You don't find that kind of futures value. When we talk about futures in the Premier League, Tom, 
it's often about relegation in top four, really, as much as yeah, it's, it's useless. You're picking either Liverpool yeah. or Man City to win the title, and they're both going to be around two to one. You might exactly. And like we say, like we want better value when we're looking at a season long bet. So in that case, just bet a city Liverpool game head to head and put a couple of units on it. Right. Like there's no reason to do the futures market unless it's kind of the relegation race. Usually. Yeah. This is a different animal. There's all kinds of future stuff. I mean, we haven't even got into the goal scorer stuff. There's all kinds of props you can find at various books of, you know, who will be the best team in Cascadia between Portland uh, Seattle and, and and Vancouver, who will be the best team in Texas. There's now three teams there. There's a lot of fun regional stuff uh, in MLS as well at this point with so many teams. We're getting more and more in with St. Louis next year. So, um, yeah, it just gets more and more fun every season as far as I'm concerned with Major League Soccer. It's a fun sport to watch. It's an even more fun sport to bet on, and you can find a real edge in it. We hope that that's one of the points that we've been able to hammer into you over the course of this half hour. But Taylor, thank you so much for the time today. Where can people find you in the work you're doing? You can find me over at ATL T Will. That's a very convol- convoluted name, but there's just one L there at the end of it. So you'll find me there on Twitter. That's right. And of course, you can catch your show on Uh, on the MLS betting weekly podcast. You might see another familiar face on that one there. But Taylor, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. And guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget, hit that like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about the show. Follow us on Twitter. Once again, I'm at TV at work. Follow at betting pros as well. And if you're not a member of the Discord, sign up today. Get yourself a betting pros account. Head to bettingpros.com. Let's win together and let's cash some tickets. Best of luck this weekend, everybody. We'll see you next episode.